Good evening, everyone. Welcome to that sewing club. How are you doing, Alethea? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good, thanks. Yeah, good. it's great to see so many people in here tonight. I guess they've all heard who we have coming on tonight. <laughs> Take the time out and share this out with your followers, you all, because we are going to have you know who in the house. So we want to make sure we get others in. I already see we have four more joined us tonight. So go ahead while we're waiting on our guests to come in. Please take the time and share this out on Twitter, Facebook, and um, I think it's Google Plus you can share it on. Yes, because so. she is going to be sharing five steps to evaluating a pattern before making a muslin or twall. And she even has a handout for us. So goodies. I can't wait to see what's on the handout. So mm -hmm. She should be here any moment. So what have you been up to this week? Olivia? I was going to tell them real quick, get your notebooks out too and take notes because you know Andrea shares a lot of nuggets. So make sure you get your notebooks out, a piece of paper or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have I been up to? I have been prepping for, uh, I have to turn a Christ uh, wedding gown into a christening gown. So I have that to do today um, uh, by this weekend. Christening, I think it's Sunday. Um, yeah, I believe. And then I have... Um, I want my workout, something workout related cut out so I can stay in step with Myra. <laughs> Myra, you're doing such a wonderful job of uh, hosting our uh, workout gear challenge. I can't keep up. I'm kind of getting a little frustrated. I want to get something done, even if it's one pants leg or something. And let's see, what else am I working on? Um, that's my focus this week. Uh, definitely got to get that finished up because what Wednesday is tomorrow, so got to get christening gown done. So that'll be my main focus. How about you, Don? Uh, yeah, it's been a really busy week. I've been working. I got a photo shoot with a six-year-old, <laughs> but <laughs> it's as crazy as it sounds. It was really, really good. Um, uh, she was lovely. Uh, so I'm gonna have a video up soon. Um, with a DIY that I'm earlier, but I'm just getting better at all the video editing, making titles and things like that. So I'm very excited. That'll be out this week. As well as um, I had a blog post out on my favorite books. And yeah, there was quite a few because I really love books. But yeah, I'm looking forward to doing a, a video on each one of the books too. So uh, to do a bit of a, a deeper review on each one. So yeah, that's been busy. Um, I think, yeah, that, that's been pretty much it. Just a lot of learning and a lot of hustling. So I can't wait to see how it turns out. I guess the other last thing is on my blog. I've been working on colorways for the jacket, trying to figure out which fabric to use, what looks best. And I'll um, have a couple different ones. So I was going to go on to Periscope and discuss that with the ladies this week and see if they can help me choose. Because I'm really on the fence. Normally I start with the fabric of Alethea and then I... You know, I just decide on the design, but this mm -hmm. time I had a design that I did when I was back in university, and I was trying to kind of modernize it. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many, so many different choices. So yeah, I'm looking forward to going on Periscope and getting everyone's opinions on that. Okay, yeah. I saw you. Uh, I saw your post on Instagram, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with that. Yes. Oh, let's see, she's still not here. She's on the way though. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So we can introduce her now when she's not here. Her ears will be burning, but we can do it anyway. Um, I would just like to say that I have so many people. Last time she was on, Andrea of So Too Fit, the fitting queen, so many people said, you know, uh, I talked with Andrea and she gave me the lift that I needed to keep going. She's really, she encouraged me or she showed me some valuable little thing. And I mean, even me, I got a Skype call out of the blue one day and I was kind of like in my pajamas. And she's like, come on, girl, get out there. Don't think it. Stop researching. Get out and do it. So um, I think she is fabulous. So I'm thrilled mm -hmm. that we get to interview her again this evening. And how about mm -hmm. you, Alethea? Do you have any Andrea stories as we invite her in? Well, you're not my favorite Andrea story. And that's a jacket, my, um, my uh, gold leather jacket that I made. And um, that's my greatest Andrea time. And here she is. Speaking of Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Hello. Hello. How are you? 
Wonderful. Very good. And how are you this evening? I'm doing real good. Okay, I'm looking at the camera right there and you guys are right here. <laughs> <laughs> look at us, Andrea, look at us. <laughs> now, if I look at you, then I'd be looking down. So I don't want to look down because you know how the, the camera is up here. So <laughs> I was talking to Ziva yesterday. We had an opportunity to finally get to meet each other. Hello, Ziva, I see you're on here. <laughs> is Ziva on here? I yes, didn't see I her. Oh, hey, in. hey Ziva. Vicky. <laughs> okay. Linda. Yeah, Ziva said, Andrea, you're different from everybody else. You <laughs> I said, I said, why do we have to look at people who are look when we're looking at the camera, they're looking down. And so when we're looking at the camera, it's almost like we're looking up people's nose. And she said, Andrea. You just do things so different. You're everybody's not like you. I say, okay, Ziva, I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna not look at them if I'm having to look at their nose hairs. <laughs> she said I'm a gadget person because when I told her that I want to get that 360 camera and do a tutorial for you guys, I can tell you I'm not going to be looking at my tutorial because you're going to have your fingers looking all around the room while I'm trying to teach. <laughs> right. I don't know about that camera. I, that's probably one that I will not be getting because I don't want anybody looking around my room. <laughs> while I'm talking, that's gonna be I don't want anybody looking at my feet <laughs> while I'm talking. So no, <laughs> they can have the 360. <laughs> okay. Well, what? It, so I apologize that I missed too much, but I have a lot to talk about. Do you guys want me to just get right on it? Oh, we're ready. We're, we, uh, we've got notebooks. We're ready for you. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I sent a link to Dawn that she can put in the in the sample and you guys can look at the link. I have a nice little handout for you. That's what I took my time doing. So the four minutes that y'all waited for me, it was worth four minutes for five tips written down for you to take notes. This is my club information. This goes into my club. So what are we talk? Did y'all have any questions of me before I get started? Because y'all know how I is. No questions. I uh, will say this. If there are any questions, just post them down at the bottom, at the bottom of your screen. So that way they won't interrupt you while you're talking. Uh, just post them where it says questions and topics. Whatever questions you have, you can just put them there. And uh, Andrea, either uh, Dawn or myself, we can, you know, at some point in time, you can take a break and then you can address those questions. Cool. That'll work. All right. So hello, everybody. If you never met me, I'm Andrea with Soul to Fit. I have a YouTube channel that I love to record videos for to show you how to fit patterns for yourself. I concentrate on learning and understanding patterns more than I probably so. Ah, so I think buying patterns and buying fabric are probably my two greatest weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, I also study both of them just as much. So my main objective for everything that I do is to help you to be more empowered to fit patterns no matter who you buy them from no matter what they are or whether you do them for yourself, is to help you to fully understand and be empowered to fit your body. And so I kind of said on my blog, you know, I teach you how to fit patterns for your taste, your style and your body. It doesn't really matter what size your body is. I started wanting to learn how to fit because of a simple little problem I went through with a customer back in, way before I even went back to, to our fashion design school. Uh, I had such a serious issue with fitting this one person that I felt like there was no other way but to learn and fully understand everything I could possibly understand about the patterns that I was using. Even though I was using the pattern to work with her, I couldn't fit her. So that began my whole thing for learning how to fit patterns. And so with that, <laughs> Thank you, Don. So with that, my 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 learning experience is now my 
seems like my full passion and goal in life is just to fully understand and teach you everything I learned about the patents. So my first, my thing that I thought when I was uh, approached by Don to ask, uh, to come on here today and present to you guys is something that I'd probably never stop to say in a systematic way to you all because I'm always just moving through things so fluidly. So it, it took me a moment when she asked me, what is it that I could share with you guys? And the one thing I thought would help you all is to get into my mind and think through my process. Um, I don't often write a lot of things down because I did that so long ago that I kind of just burned them into my mind. And every time I pick my hand moves, I do the same thing over and over again. It's almost like route mem memorization. So with that being said, I developed five things for you guys to remember that you it's going to be easy for you to remember because if you just remember these five words, you'll be able to remember exactly what to do every time you look at a pattern before you cut the muslin or the toile or, and I use muslin and toile because y'all know I hate cutting muslins, but we can call them working muslins. We can call them toiles. We can call them whatever you want. Either way, they are samples and they are the first garment you make no matter what. Even if it's a formal garment, it's still going to be the first one with that fabric. Unless you're going to make an entire line of that same garment with that same fabric, you are always going to be starting over. Every single time you change fabric, you are essentially starting over with the entire fitting process. So, number one. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say, um, Andrea, really quickly, that when we um, used the link, there was a, a page that we have to sign into. It says, so to fit by A.D. Lynn, email, first name, and stuff. So do you want us to That's fill that in and then we'll get the sheet? Or? That, when, you, when you log in, when you sign, I'm sorry, I apologize, y'all. You, you got to give something to get something from me. Y'all just got to know that. Put your name and your email in there and it'll give you the page. It'll send you straight to this, okay? Ooh, that looks lovely. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. I just wanted right. to uh, clarify. <laughs> okay. Oh, number one, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the five steps, yes, subscribe, thank you. So the five, if you've already subscribed, Samina, which you are already on the list, a lot of you guys are already on the list, just type your name in. It's going to automatically know you're already on my mailing list for my email newsletters, and you'll still get this form, this, this, you'll still get it. You won't get extra emails, okay? So just remember that. All right, five steps for evaluating a pattern before cutting your fabric. <laughs> I just put muslin or toile. Number one is to evaluate. So number one, the first thing you need to do when you start out, and I'll just show y'all, you know, I'm gonna put my hand over there. Look, got a little picture, look. Evaluate. <laughs> Evaluate the design lines of, oh, look at that, my fingernail. Y'all see that? I can't concentrate on nothing, y'all. You know. <laughs> anyway, evaluate. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to take a very close look at the de design lines of the garment that you're going to sew. That's the first thing you're going to check. That's why it's important. When you are looking at a pattern, you want to make sure that you find one that has these kinds of lines on it. Now, sometimes the garment is going to be to have, it's going to have a picture on the pattern or the design or the magazine. You're going to be able to see those design lines, okay? So if you can't see those design lines, your first thing to do is look for the technical sketch or the technical drawing with this is what this is it's like a technical drawing it's not as technical as normal because it doesn't have measurements on here okay it doesn't have how long the back is but those that information comes down later so the first thing you're going to do is look at the design lines okay evaluate inspect the technical drawings and then the second thing you're going to do 
is read and reread and read and reread all of your descriptions, okay? So that's very, very important. That's number one, okay? Number two on the list is to consider. Now, this is very important. Now, we do this so natural. You, you guys are probably sitting there thinking, hey, I do this all the time already. Good grief. My, my room is dirty. Y'all, I can't have that. <laughs> anyway, so the next thing you do is to consider, okay? What are you going to consider, though? You're going to consider the sketch or the model's picture that is wearing the garment that you're looking at, okay? You're going to take a very close look at how that model, how what size she is, how she's standing. You're going to look at her elbow. You're going to look at her elbow, and you're going to see where her shoulder is compared to her elbow. Then you're going to look at her wrist, and you consider your wrist and your elbow compared to the length or the breadth of the garment that she's wearing based on where your elbow is considered where she is, okay? So say for instance, this person right here, all right? So I got this person here and I see her elbow is where this line is, right? Or right here. And I say, okay, well, that skirt is to her knee. I'm looking at her knee. So all of this here kind of stuff is what I am considering. That's something to keep in mind. You consider how the model is, her height, the sketch compared to the fabric print, the size of the print on that model. How is it wearing on that person, okay? Then the next thing, that was number two, all right? Number three is now you take out your measuring tape mentally okay you should already have your measurements memorized you've been wearing your body since birth if you don't have your measurements memorized my number one assignment to you today get your measuring tape and memorize your measurements you you shouldn't even be thinking about oh what size is mine no you should have those numbers memorized if i was to walk up to you and say what's your waist you should go just like that if i could if i walked up to you and say what's your back length you should be able to tell me you sew for yourself you should know these numbers this is this is like rock memorization okay yep. so the next one is to measure now this this picture is not that great but i'll show it to you because this is going to be on y'all's little printout that y'all get okay that just me measuring a pattern okay you're going to measure the, you know, you're going to measure the pattern, you're going to measure the bust, the waist, the hip, the neckline. You're going to find out where it is. And I'll have, I'll, I'll add links to the video that show you guys how to do this stuff that I have on my YouTube channel to this here. So you can go back to it later on and check it because this here will be up for you to see anytime. Okay. But the sleeve, the bicep length, the sleeve length, the bicep length, the skirt length, the pant length, the side, front, and back. Now, let me talk about measurements real quick. Measurements can be a little bit tricky. This is number three, right? Yeah. Okay. You have to have the measurements before you can do, <laughs> you're in denial. <laughs> don't be in denial about your measurements, y'all. They don't need to be on anybody's public radio station. Okay. I know y'all saw the last video I just did for my daughter. I used her as my model. She's very proud of her body. She is a model as a, that's what she does. So she loves her body. A lot of people don't love their body, but you still have to use, use it's your body. You got to recognize it. Once you start fitting patterns though, for some reason, I've seen people become more confident, stand taller because the clothes fit them better. Dumpy clothes make a dumpy attitude. If your clothes are too tight, it makes you insecure and self-conscious. If they're too big and are hanging off your shoulders incorrectly, they you become self-conscious and in you know you just you lose a lot of what a lot of strength and power in yourself by not having things fit properly. You have control of that. 
you know your basics yeah some of the stuff that uh shoulder length i mean i can glance at a pattern and tell if the sh if the neckline is going to be too low i can glance at a pattern and tell if the neckline is going to be too wide once you get used to doing that you'll be so much faster you won't waste so much fabric making muslins so when i say measure I say measure the most important things. I like to do tissue fitting. Sometimes I don't go through the entire process that you see on my YouTube video for tissue fitting. I might just take the pattern and just kind of lay, you know, I might just kind of, you know, just put it, place it up against my body just to check certain elements of the pattern. Um, you know, that's, that's how you will become because I am not going to spend a dollar ninety nine is is a dollar ninety nine above zero for some muslin, and a sheet, no matter if it's fifty cent or two dollars, it's still fifty cent above zero. And anytime I spend anything more than zero making something that's not going to be worn, then that to me is a waste of money. Unless it's I'm trying to save. You, well, of course, you know, I get good fabric, so I have to be careful with that. So I'm just keeping y'all mindful of some things. Don't make a muslin for a T-shirt. Really? Because think about it. If you make a muslin for a T-shirt, you still got to deal with the fabric that you're going to make that muslin, that you're going to make the T-shirt out of, and it's still going to fit differently. You can make that T-shirt five different times like we did with the pair of crafters, uh, the pair crafters wardrobe challenge i think some of us made the same garment maybe five to six times or even more and every time we made it it fit different i know i made mine a couple of times extra and it was different every time i used a different fabric okay so that's something to keep in mind now number four i'm going too fast no I'm not at all this is awesome. <laughs> all right number four after you have your measurements, now it's time to compare your measurements for your taste and your style to the pattern itself, okay? So the next thing is to do is to take that, let's see if I can move my fingers out of the way. There we go. <laughs> I don't like my fingers showing on here. Okay, so the next thing is to compare the type of pattern to your body type, the designer's fit model. You know, if you're going to sew, like, there's this lady, she's called uh, SBCC. You know, she's skinny, B, chick, something, patterns. Very well known in the sewing realm, okay? But she's super tiny. She's very small, okay? And she makes her patterns for very short people. Carol, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I called you out. She makes her patterns for people that are very petite and and a little bit uh, more normal in size. Not normal, but more uh, regular, like 40-inch bust and little, little tall, you know, just fit five. Oops. It looks like we lost... Um... It looks like we lost. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Panic stations. She's just going to reconnect. Um, I did get that sheet. I had no problems getting it. Um, just had to subscribe, following along when she talks. I hope everyone else got it as well. Um, it looks like she's coming back. If we just give her a second. I absolutely love that she said sewing realm. It's like we have our own little happy world where we can, you know, ignore Super Bowls or whatever and hang out and so uh, Carol she got teased for being short which might or might not be true but she says she's five <laughs> five feet tall but she's got a big ego now I don't think it's ego Carol I think it's a big personality so <laughs> so yes bah, that too don't have um Alethea either is she here no okay missing some people you guys are stuck with oh there she is yay <laughs> i don't know what happened to her um i'm just gonna and really we got left off at four <laughs> so hopefully she's back soon you look tall to me yes 
Um, yes, says she's coming. Oh, oh yeah. I was wondering if some, what had happened. Okay, I, it said Dawn and 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 said you guys were gone. Oh, okay. So I swear, I've been boring everyone the whole time you've been gone. <laughs> I have not gone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, did we? Where did I jump off, or where did I get cut off? We were in four. Okay, four. All right. Comparing the body. Okay, so you compare your body type to the pattern weight or the body type and the of the pattern designer's fit model. So say for instance, when I finally, finally pull out my patterns, y'all, this is like giving birth. It is hard. It is not as easy as I thought. Well, <laughs> it is easy because I've been finished designing the pattern. It's not easy to prepare patterns for you guys. There's a lot more to it, isn't there, than you think. Just not because you it's have a I've lot seen more. Your patterns, you can whip them out in an hour. I've watched you do it, but to send everything else along with it, I was quite surprised too at how much it takes. But we know you'll do a fabulous job. Yeah, it's so I have help now, but that takes time. Okay, so the body type and pattern of the, the pattern designers fit model. So say for instance, if I say this pattern is made for a more indoor rear end and a more indoor bust with a smaller waist, then you're going to have to take into consideration that my pattern starting off is not going to fit the flat bottom person. And am I really concerned that it's going to fit the flat bottom person? Not necessarily. And it's not to be ugly, but every designer is fitting a certain uh, demographic. And to fit that demographic, you have to let go of another demographic, which is why we absolutely need to do pattern alterations, which is number five. Number five is now the part where you go right on head, honey child, and do your pattern alterations, okay? So number five is alter your patterns. Okay, now, Let's just make sure we understand this. Okay, so you guys have my visual. I just saw the words down there. <laughs> yeah, I, I can still see you. All right, cool. All right, so altering the pattern. This is most important. And do not make the mistake and think that I am saying every alteration has to be done before you make a muslin or before you make your first test. It is not going to happen. The only way that's going to happen is if you, well, you still got to make a muslin because the absolute number one, and, and y'all know I'm saying this with all sincerity because it is the true fact, 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 fact. The absolute best way to get exactly the type of fit you want is draping. You're never going to get anything different. You can't get it with measuring unless you use exactly zero ease on everything and it fits you like a glove, okay? And that would be called a moulage. And you can't do anything with that, okay? You can't, you can't sit down, you can't raise your arm, you can't turn, you can't breathe. It is the absolute zero starting point for fit. So when you get ready to alter your pattern, you're altering it with the consideration that you've already taken your measurements. Better check those measurements and compare them before you start or else you'll end up with a problem. So number one thing to do is two most important things to alter before you start cutting your muslin. And these are glaring issues, glaring. I mean, two to three inch differences. One inch difference is worth the change. That would be your width, okay? Your width of your pattern, which is, is it gonna make it around your body? If it's not going to make it around your body, don't waste time cutting the muslin because you're not going to even get it closed to be able to check the fit. You got to check and make sure it's going to fit around your curves. Okay. So that means for a pair of pants, if the finished measurement that you've checked for the hip is 48 and your measurement is 49, don't waste time. Don't even do it. Just <laughs> add, the, add the measurements and you'll be good. Okay. Number two, okay, that's full hip, full bust, you know, the full bust adjustment, the full hip adjustment, all of those width adjustments fall into this category. Number two is the above the waist and the in the below the waist 
length adjustment. Two types of adjustments, they are not the same. Changing the length of your, your waist does not necessarily change the length of the skirt unless it is doesn't have a waistline, okay? So keep that in mind. Changing the length of where your bus dart falls is very important. Move the bus dart, put it where it needs to go before you try it on, because before you make a muslin. Because if you make a muslin and that bus dart is in the wrong place, why? <laughs> why? I just asked why. Help me, Ziva. Help me, Ziva. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack here. Why would you do that? So those are the two most important things under step number five. So for a recap, we have number one is evaluate. Number two, consider the sketch, the model's height, the fabric print, how big is the print, how is it hanging on the model. Number three, measure the pattern, check the simple parts of the, of the pattern that you know could be possible glaring issues. If they already have the finished garment measurements on the pattern, if they don't, use your measuring tape. Number four, compare those measurements that you took in step number three to your body measurements and where you like things to fit and how loose or how tight you like things to fit. And number five, make any alterations to your pattern for any glaring issues that you see that will prohibit you from getting a good test fit or test garment from the start. That's all I have to share, ladies. That was fabulous. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. So are these the type of goodies that people will get when they join your so to Fit club? Yes, ma'am. And I didn't even think I forgot all about that. See, this here, this this uh, PDF goes into there with a link to this video. Uh, and then, oh, thank you, thank you, Samina. I missed <laughs> you last night, Samina. You weren't at the meeting. Oh, you can't. I can't go. Did, look, Carol say I can't go. That. Oh, sorry, yeah. to hear that, Samina. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, we had a good meeting last night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, the um, is that the first time I finished something really quick? Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. still have to tell us more about the club so to fit because oh, um, yeah. I haven't seen too much out there about it. I did see it's on your website. I can put the link there for everyone. Yes, Even the concept is quite interesting. I'm wondering what it covers. So what I'm sure people love to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Club so to club fit. fit is me unplugged not meaning my crude jokes and my funny way of handling things it means that anytime i have something to share anything i do any kind of video i i do a one quick you know tutorial it all gets dropped into that bucket for you to utilize as a resource library anytime you want now the system has a particular phone app for the ios and the android where you can literally log into your account and have what is called a library now the library is what you pull up is if i put a, a video in there the video is there for you forever as long as you are a member of the club so the club basically is and I'm pulling it up. I probably should have had it pulled up already. I apologize, Dawn. Um, oh, I put the link there, um, okay. and I can and I can screen share what it looks like if you'd like as well. Okay, yeah, but this is how it looks. Okay, this is how the club looks when you are a member. Okay, so when you are a member, you will have a long list of videos and different updates that are available to you only as a member so when i send out an update updates are special things that are just for people who are currently members so if you are a member you will get an update if it's a technical thing like a new learning library say for instance this one here is a message okay and this one is a message and it says open right open says to me and that's the message that i sent out to the club 
and you know so that they can have whatever i just uploaded okay so last week we well the week before last i sent them something so the new one they have is like this um uh, here's you click on it and then it goes Hello, to the video okay so all i'm doing is Hello, just everyone. telling you video what is, is on here okay okay so basically i am doing a tutorial something that i had on my mind that day and i say hey you know let me just do a tutorial now a lot of times i might be in my sewing room at 3 a.m in the morning and you know you guys who have met me from last november 2015 you are you have been prone to enjoying andrea just turning on periscope and doing a new tutorial one to two sometimes three times a day well now i turn my camera on and record those tutorials and dump them into my learning library which is club so to fit um i have a question will there be any patterns or just pattern alteration no it's gonna be like patterns me. it's gonna be patterns i have one pattern right now which like i told some of my club members some of them are taking longer because i am just learning all of this here stuff so mm -hmm. like this one here this is the michelle obama top that's going to the club members okay this one here is the flare skirt that's going to the club members this one here is adriana's dress that i did last week adriana's dress is on my uh on my instagram account that pattern is going to the club members okay so the patterns that are going to the club members are patterns that i just want to design i just i see a pattern or i see somebody on tv yeah. and i sit in front of the computer and i design it and i say here y'all can have it okay so that's what i do for the club members because it it frees me it frees me to be more philanthropic <laughs> so to speak <laughs> yeah and then like um you know so and then pdfs go to them i don't put pdfs on my website i just don't because i'm not gonna sit and type and you don't get paid on, no anyway you know what i mean yeah um i was wondering if anyone would like to come on camera or ask a question for andrea since we have her in our little hot seat here um if you will just tell me in the comments or if you have a question you can put it below we're gonna have so our I'm first Maria. virtual uh virtual q a next week for the club members we're gonna have our first virtual q a next week so also the club members are welcome to send in any questions to me to my facebook group twitter or anything for me to create a video to answer their question and put it into the club Okay. So with your patterns that you're doing, are you saying you're doing, you're not doing a PDF, you're mailing these patterns out? I just no, want to be clear. No, all PDFs. So they are PDFs, but you say you don't send PDFs to where? I don't. I, just, I, I was unclear about that. I don't put PDFs. I don't put this kind of stuff, PDFs on my website. You know, okay. like. You know how some people say they just put club. PDFs on their website for people to just download okay. willy nilly. I don't, I don't do all that. I just feel like that that goes to the club members because they take the time and they invest in me, and so I want gotcha. to make sure that I provide them with some benefit. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. All right. I want to make sure I heard that right. Make sure so you do PDFs. They're just not on for everybody. They're just for the club members. That's right. Yeah. If I gotcha. if I give out PDFs and stuff to other people, it'll it'll probably happen through some other form, like on the YouTube video or something in a link at the bottom of the YouTube. Like right now, I have a thing in one of my YouTube videos, and I think Myra was able I don't know how Myra saw it, but she must have been yeah. scrolling through some of my videos and saw one of those uh downloads that I provided and she sent me an email thanking me for it. Hey, Miss Lady, what's going on? Hey, y'all. <laughs> Hi, Carol. I'm kind of under the radar because I'm, ugh. 
this contracting is still kind of slow, so. Uh -oh. Stand up, Carol. Stand up so we can see your favorite outfit. Oh, you like my dress? This is an old dress. Yes. I this is the first time posting it, though. <laughs> okay, Cute. so listen. This is what I wanted to um, say, because uh, one night on the phone, or one morning on the phone with Andrea, like two, three in the morning, uh, she brought to my attention number two. And as long as I've been sewing, I never really paid attention. And I am short. I'm very short. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I have a square shape and a large bust. So I have a lot to consider. So when I look at patterns like this one is a great example. This is on my table now. She said to me, I don't know if you remember, she said to me, that's going to be really long on you because you can see this model, she got to be 5758. Five, and sure enough, the drape on this thing right here, it literally touched the floor. So what I had to do was I had to take three inches out. I think I took three inches out of the back piece, and that was fine. And then you can see on the model, the cross part is cropped. And because she's taller than me and her torso is bigger than mine, I already knew I didn't have to do anything to that because I knew it was going to hang in a good place for me. So it hangs about right here on me. So considering how my shape is, how the model is, when I buy patterns, I automatically know what I have to do or what kind of work is going to have to go into the pattern in order for me to wear it and fit it. So normally I wouldn't have never bought this pattern, but after I learned how to realize that I could wear this, I was able to go back and get it because I really do like this. And it's on my table now. Actually, I'll probably finish it today. So you guys will get to see a picture of it. But she had definitely opened up my eyes to the consider part because I'm a perfect example of consider because I'm nowhere near as tall as these women. <laughs> so <laughs> everything I buy is way too long. Like five, sometimes I end up cutting five inches off of pants, legs. It's crazy. And that's the reason why I know where to cut because it's something that I do all the time. Um, another thing Andrea got me to do that I didn't used to do because I thought I had a full bust was shorten the waist. The first time I made a t-shirt, I did a small sway back adjustment watching one of her videos and I shortened the waist by an inch. And I'm thinking, well, why do I have to shorten the waist? I need that extra drop because my bust comes out. She was like, you ain't but this tall. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna give it a try. And now <laughs> I cut the waist and my shirts fit me wonderfully. It's wonderful. I make a t-shirt, it's like I bought it from the store. <laughs> so I'm like too excited now because everything I sew now fits everything. And I'm not a Muslim person. So I'll drape yeah. I'll drape Rosie, but I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna put it in the waist. I wanna get into the fabric I bought. I wanna sew my project. So I don't waste time on muslins. So and you know, I'm like if it don't fit, then I'll just, you know. That's it for me. <laughs> you don't fit quick, right? Right. <laughs> you know <laughs> Let me say this. For those of you that are sh uh, shopping to, to help you with that, especially when you're looking at patterns and whatnot, just to give you a quick guide on that to help you with what Andrea was saying. On the back of your pattern, that's why you have these measurement charts and stuff. There's one, and it may not be clear, but right here you have your back waist length measurement. So each size has it, it tells you what your back waist length is. So if you have your measurements and you memorize them like Andrea was saying, you kind of know what your waist length is gonna look like at a particular size. Also right here at the bottom, uh, most patterns have this finished measurement. So it'll tell you the length of what the different views are gonna be. So if you already know your height and everything, you can kind of gauge that automatically by your length and by your measurements. So this is kind of a basic help. Just like you have the basic measurements to choose your pattern, then you have the basic help 
for that. So you'll know, well, do I want to work with this pattern? Do I want to engage in all of these alterations? This is, this is a general guide. Also, um, Vogue is the only one that I know that does this. And I wish all pattern companies would pick this up and maybe more, more of them do this, I don't know. But right here, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to this on your patterns on the back, especially Vogue, but you have these little uh, shape diagrams. And they tell you basically what shapes or body types that these patterns are geared towards. So like this one is geared towards the hourglass shape for a long body, for a long, for a tall person, and even for a shorter person uh, uh, or high challenged person. You know, so these are things that you want to pay attention to. And uh, you can find these chart measurements on um, Vogue, I believe. So you'll know exactly what these body types are. And they do have them in the catalogs. But those are just some general basic guidelines when you're shopping for your patterns to kind of help you decide, okay, do I even want to buy this pattern? And like Andrea says, $2 is $2, you know, <laughs> 99 cents, 99 cents, you know, that can go towards another pattern. But that's something to keep in mind um, to help you even more so with um, with this chart. So Definitely. Uh, that actual pattern that you had in your hand, Alethea, that Vogue pattern, uh -huh. I made that dress when it first came out. And it says on the back that it's not for a square shape. I put that dress together mm -hmm. and that knot in front and put that dress on and I look like a Coke can. I look like this <laughs> tube of glue. And it was the right. only thing ever. <laughs> I mean, that most dress people don't care to this. Right. right. So now, another thing Andrea told me about considering my height is to put some flare on the bottom. And now I don't have to get rid of the pattern because now mm -hmm. it actually resembles in a, like I have a waist, but at first I look just like this mouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how that on me. So that was that as soon as I stood in the mirror, I was like, oh, no, no, no can't do that. <laughs> it's a pretty dress. I couldn't give away the pattern. I didn't want to give away the pattern. I still have the pattern. It's cut out. So now I have some more knowledge and I can actually make that dress work for my body type. Thank yes, you, Andrea. Well, that goes back to what Andrea was saying in number um, one, uh, evaluate the design lines and stuff and consider, you know, number one and number two. That goes back to that process because uh, just because the pattern is what it is don't mean it's good for you. You can still use it, but you bring up a good point, Carol, that you can use it, but then you might have to add a little design element to make it work for you. So it's not a complete loss. So, right. so I like that. So now what you have to uh, consider after you take a look at that kind of stuff, like Carol wanted um and these are some of the benefits of, of being in my club you know carol just has been a wonderful resource for me helping me to build my club the bet from the bottom up thank you very much carol i appreciate you so much um but when when i review somebody i have a i had a customer come last week but the particular lady that's coming this week and i was looking at green Teresa Teresa's comment down there about her back waist now uh, Teresa, I'm going to assume that you are in a, you know, you're a more mature woman. And, and for, at, at some point, as we get older, our backs become longer. We still, you sometimes have to do a sway back adjustment because the length in the place that we need it is not there. And that's usually from the lower shoulder blade up to the neck, whereas below the shoulder blade to the hip line, so if y'all notice how I compartmentalize all of my alterations for patterns and stuff like that. So as a woman becomes older, her back becomes a little bit more curved and it creates that length needs to be up here between the shoulder blade and the neckline. And so you just have to keep that in mind. But when Carol was telling me about some things and I say, even with that Vogue dress, if you really like the dress, here, let me tell you what you need to do to change it to make it your dress. And so I said, hey, Carol, 
just do this from now on. And I showed her a similar, y'all know, y'all know I'm good at keeping up with stuff, right? Because <laughs> yeah, it was like right here. And I was going to show you the picture. Anyway, I showed her the flare picture of the flare skirt. And I say, all you need to do is make sure right from your waist, start going out this way. And I use Beth Midler as an example. And mm -hmm. Beth Midler has a certain type of build. Man, I can't see it, find it. Oh man, must have fallen. Anyway, Beth Midler has a certain type of build. She wears every single thing you ever see her wearing. If it's not, and she doesn't wear mini skirts, I've never seen her wear them. But everything she wears has just a little flip right above the knee. And I was sharing mm -hmm. that with Carol, and I say, all you need to do is just go out just a little bit, just mm -hmm. above the knee, at the hemline, mm -hmm. between the hip line drape to wherever your hem is going to go, and never let that dress go a certain length. And so mm -hmm. if, if we were to make that black dress that you just showed that Vogue, it would change the entire look and the fit and how it would hang on her. So yes, mm -hmm. start out by considering who the pattern was made for or the, the size and like the ones that, um, you know, that's why I say the body style, your body type. And that would be this one here, like she put on there. I think um, those different ones, who is it made for? You know, you got mm -hmm. your hourglass, rectangle, inverted, and, 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 you know, a lot of women don't like to use those words, but we have to have something to base things on. So mm -hmm. I thought I might share that. Here's a thing to um, a thought. You don't really know your body type. You're not really sure what clothes work well on you or whatnot. Like I just said, find somebody who has a style or body type like yours and look at what they wear and look how they wear it and so when you do that you can constantly say okay well that's my body type right there these are the kind of styles that look good on me so when you shop for patterns uh you might want to find something very similar to that style those particular styles and then if it's not exactly like it like she said you know you your design you're the pattern maker i mean not the pattern maker but now you have the opportunity to recreate or adjust or whatever but yes. start finding somebody go through magazines go through the website or whatever and find somebody who has a body type that looks like you and that way um that'll give you a perspective on how to consider to um choose your patterns okay would you all agree so, with that yeah so the question from ziva or should i just wait to dawn i'm sorry dawn <laughs> oh no no i was just not i was just trying not to interrupt um there's a question from ziva and also one from green teresa down below you guys can uh, take so, it off if you want so green oh bye carol thank you very much for coming in <laughs> okay so do i look over here okay uh the question from green teresa is uh, when you have made a muslin that fits how do you reconcile that with the new fabric the next time just fine fit the new fabric yes you okay i i suggest starting out with a new pattern with a if you plan to make it more often start with a fabric in the family close to the weight and drapeability that you are going to continue making from that point on the 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 differences can skew more and be changed more readily at the side seams and at the main the main design lines so for instance the main design lines might be princess seams it might be armhole princess shoulder princess but the side seam in that area there is where you're going to do the fine fine tuning just try to make sure that you keep into consideration now you had um when you reconcile so reconciling for when you talk about reconciling the one thing you need to be very very careful of when you change fabric is the dart placement because the dart is going to make the biggest difference in a new fabric when you change whatever fabric that you're making for that garment okay so do not sew don't just dive right in and start sewing that garment 
like you did the first time if you change the fabric. Go ahead and pin with safety pins, the dots, pin those in place. Try not to pin too much at the tip of them because you can damage the fabric from the weight alone, okay? But just pin those dots in so that you can try it on and, and then make sure you position those dots properly because the different weight or the different drape of your fabric is going to cause those dots to change how they hang on your body. Okay, so the first fabric might have been stiffer and the dots stayed where they were. The second fabric, you might make it a little bit lighter. The dots are going to be droopy and you're going to have to rearrange and, and take up different amounts for those dots. Those are the things that I notice most often. Yeah, the fabric drapes differently and so the weight of the dot, and the dot intake is going to affect how the pattern holds those dots, okay? You're welcome, and, Lynn. <laughs> our last question that we have here, I just lost it, was Ziva. And she said, how do you know which one of those body types is yours? If you're hair shaped like some of us or hourglass or whatever? Uh, you would know in the companies that give you those shapes, they determine by certain um, precepts. So you have your waist. They usually can start at your waist, okay? And your waist is going to be, let's just use your waist as your midpoint. It's like a, a bar graph or a, a roller, roller coaster graph, okay? So if the waist gets larger and more in line, the, the smaller the waist and the larger the difference between the bust and the waist, I mean, the, okay, just leave the waist here. The difference between the waist here and uh, and the bust and the hip is going to determine whether you heavier on top or heavier on the bottom. If it's pretty balanced, that's why they call it a an hourglass figure because your waist might be 35 inches and your hips might be 45. That's only a 10 inch difference. Then your bust might be 45 that's still only a 10 inch difference that's a that's a hourglass but then your waist might start to grow a little bit and your waist starts to be within 10 inches so your waist might be nine inches different from your hip and your bust you're starting to get into a more straight rectangle figure now i would think that it would be best for you to look at those figures from the side because most women are going to have hips no matter what when you look at it, they're going to have that, that curve right here and a little bit of indention at their waist. But when you turn them to the side, that it looks more like this because the stomach might be a little bit more protruding or the buttocks might be a little bit more protruding. So keep that kind of stuff in mind, which is why Carol said when she tied that knot on the front of that dress, having a little bit just straight down and not that much indention, didn't say that she was too big it just meant that she has the dis her her placement placement of our our blessings are in a different place and you don't want to put a big old pretty bow you know you you don't want it like right there you know what i'm saying you know you can think about that kind of stuff so that's how you determine it's look at the measurement and how much your waist is compared to your top and your bottom I use the rule of 10. 12 and 10 to me determines the more bodacious one way or the other, upper or lower from the waist. Wow. Well, I'm going to tell you, Andrea, that, that, and maybe for somebody who don't really know that, I mean, because you're talking technical and that's how you are. Now, for me, it sounds great. I would look at it like this. The upside down triangle is for a person who's top heavy and smaller bottom. Uh, the triangle, the actual triangle, somebody who's smaller up top and a fuller bottom. Exactly. And then, of course, if you got a little bit of waist or whatnot, then that might be your hourglass figure. If you just straight up and down, then you're going to use that rectangle figure. Exactly. You know? But uh, that's how I would explain it, because, I mean, the 10 inches, 12, you lost me, like, way back at the beginning. 
I've, we've heard so people call really it good. things like apple and um, pear shaped and all those. There's lots of different ways to describe it. Although I take offense with pear shaped, but they also use that, you know, when they're saying something happened, something went horribly wrong. Oh, it all went pear shaped. I'm like, hey, I'm pear shaped. I'm awesome. So are you saying it went really well? That's what it sounds like you're saying. Yeah. You better be clearer. But yeah, they're apple, pear. Yeah, there's lots of different yeah, ways. Um, when you're talking about apples, people talk about apples. They talk about that. So they talk about pears. And they're like, OK, but some people can be a uh, uh, inverted triangle and not have any bust. So then you, mm -hmm. you just excluded their understanding. Because you're like, oh, well, wait a minute. What are you comparing it to then? Are you comparing it to the shoulder width? Or are you comparing it to the mm -hmm. tissue on my breast? You know, so basically it's either either way you look at it, something is going into or away from the waist. Mm -hmm. So if you just mm -hmm. keep that in mind, irrespective of me being technical about numbers, just keep that in mind and you will always stay the course. The waist is going to be where you have to have your zero point. You just have to. I think mm -hmm. I'm a borderline. Yeah, I saw you last night. You are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, we're a little bit over time. And you thought that you were going to get away quickly, Andrea. I was still trying. <laughs> more good advice, so we had to keep you longer. But uh, we are thrilled you came on. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. And, uh, Thank you for the handout as well. That was lovely. And uh, next week, we don't have a show. It is uh, Valentine's Day, so uh, we won't be here. Um, but on the 21st, we have Shari Williams coming on. So very yes. exciting. Another show. Fantastic. Yes, That's Shari. Oh, okay, Shari, quick question, you. Andrea. Yeah, quick question, Andrea. How long would this uh, chart be available? Is it just available for your viewers tonight or? Is there a time frame? No, that's on there. When that's on there as long as Dawn has this video up. That's for Dawn. Okay, okay. Thank All you. right, and just a quick recap. For those of you just coming in, when you click on this link, you will have to subscribe, okay? All you have to do is give your name and your email address, and it'll take you straight to this sheet for you to download, just as easy as that, okay? All right, thank you so much, Andrea. More than welcome, y'all. Appreciate the time. Thank you Very for uh, asking me on. Okay, so that's everybody on the questions then. Okay, so thank you. All right, y'all. Got to cut loose. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.